Hi, I'm James and welcome to today's tutorial, a uh, bit of a change for the channel. What we're going to look at is we're going to look at building hills. Now I recently put some pictures of some hills up made of cardboard and everybody was, oh wow, they look really good. So I thought I'd do a quick tutorial. Um, now the first thing you need is some cardboard. Now you can see here I've got one that's really battered. Um, that's fine. Um, tip for it, the largest section that you want um, needs to be intact. So if this one, that's my, really my limit. Now you can see this is quite tatty. Uh, that is not a problem. Um, to be honest, any, any corrugated cardboard will do. So we've got that. Uh, we need some tape. I've got duct tape, nice and cheap. I think I got this for about two, three quid at Tesco. Uh, we've got a glue gun. Now that's optional. You can use PVA um, to, to assemble this. So let's start by actually assembling the base um, hill. So let's just take this off. So we'll start off. Now I tend to start from the top of the hill simply because that um, gives me the, the pieces that I need to build downwards. It just work, I find it just works better that way. Now, cardboard, correct cardboard tends to bend in one direction. It doesn't bend very well in the other. So, if basically I now do another one, but going in the opposite direction, you can see that one's bending as well, but if I put them together, I didn't quite get that right, so I'll tell you what, we'll improvise a little, we'll cut that down a little. Save these little leftover bits because they can actually then just be put on. And now what we're going to do is do it so that the cardboard goes, the corrugations go in different directions and it builds the strength. So we'll use the glue gun. Get rid of that little bit there. So I just like the glue gun um, just because it, it very quickly stop sets and we're not having to wait for the PVA. Uh, also the other benefit of a glue gun, take what we've got a little tiny bit on top as well there. The other benefit of a glue gun is the fact that um, it doesn't tend to affect the cardboard as much. Um, if you use a water-based glue it can cause the odd problem. So what we'll do, let's cut a few more sections out and add them to that. Now what you can do to help you is actually put it on and he says looking for a pen that works just very quickly sketch round that there now I know it needs now to be bigger than that so I'll go for about there try and get it nice and organic looking try to avoid straight edges doesn't have to line up or anything it's just literally going on however I've got that way and then we're going to get it going the cardboard going the opposite direction I think what we'll do with this one well Go a bit closer. So we're actually going to build up a little bit of a cliff face. That'll be a bit of a new experiment with this technique. Now I've seen versions of this where people do it using um, the layers doubled up. Uh, I don't tend to do that. Uh, I think it just makes a gentler slope, which was my sharp edge. That was that one, so this is where I'm going to come in.
Now what we're going to do is find the high point and start putting tape going from there over the edge. Now what you need to do is make sure you put it in nice and tight. If you get loose bits you can just fold them over. What you don't want is big gaps. We are going to overlap slightly so that's not too much of an issue but just want it to look right. Oops, didn't get quite enough there. So I need to put a little bit more. And don't be afraid to do this, just put little patches on as you need them. This is going to provide the texture. Whatever you do, don't use a smooth tape like parcel tape or anything like that. You want a nice corrugated sort of texture. Downward from the top downwards, we're going to build up that little cliff face a little there. low hill because it was quite thin card. Um, I tend not to say how many layers to use when I do things like this because corrugated cardboard does have different thicknesses. clean the brush in a minute. So now what we need to be thinking about once we've done this is to actually start thinking about uh, putting the grass on. Now before I do actually I'm going to do something a little bit extra. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use some cat litter. Cubit the cat always tries to get into my videos so at least his cat litter is getting in on this one. So I'm just going to get a little bit of PVA and we'll just put a few little bits in. A little bit of glue, a couple of rocks. I don't know how well. Actually, that's not going to stick them particularly well. So I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll change the we'll change plan slightly. We'll warm up the glue gun. 
just to prove that these videos are not uh, fully scripted. Time to actually flock it now. So this is quite diluted um, PVA, so I'm just going to use that. And all we're going to do is spread it on an area. The sidewalk bits I'm going to do. This is where having dry brushed earlier is a bit bit of a help because you actually sort of know the areas that you're going to avoid. What I am going to do is try and hide as many of the lines as possible. Could have done a rock face there, never mind. I find with this it tends to clump a little bit and sort of not, and so almost retract for a better description. So we'll do a small area. Uh, we'll chuck some pieces on. I'm going to start with a bit of moorland. Mixture. Perhaps I cut low enough to actually get that. Okay. So I've got a little sprinkle a little bit of this on. Once I've done that, I'm going to mix it. I'm going to use a bit of uh, rough pasture. Now you could do this in two separate stages. Uh, I tend to just do it in the one. Any snag with using a clear PVA glue is you can't actually tell which bits you've done.
just a bit there. Let's go and tap some of them down. So how's that looking? It's looking a bit better. So we've done that. What we're going to do next with it? Because again, it's already playable, but I'm going to go a stage further. So let me get the gear and I'll be back. So next thing I'm going to do, we've got this clump foliage on there. I'm going to just enhance it a little. Now I've actually got um, some flower scatter dressing kit. Um, let's put the heather back in at some point. I'm going to use a few red with this. So what I'm going to do with this is dab a little bit of PVA. Let's put that clump flock. I know it's going to pick a bit, load of it up. It's always the problem with this. So what I'll do is use that to reposition it a little bit more scattered there. Let's just show you what we're going to do with that. So I've got a little tiny bit of the red and just double it over the top. That's starting to look really nice, but there is an alternative to this which I found, which I thought was quite an interesting one. I'm going to get a wax crayon. Okay, use the red, because it's the closest match. What I'm going to do, I'm going to shave a little bit off onto a bit of tissue paper. Some of them are a bit big, so I'm just going to squash them a little, cut them, just break them up a little. And again, I'm going to do the same technique. So I deliberately left one little bit. If I left two uncovered, I left one deliberately and one accidentally. So what I'm now going to do is get those little bits of crayon. Sprinkle them on. And what you find is you actually can't tell the difference between the ones that I've created like this and the ones that were already there. Now, an alternative way to do it, he says, trying to remember where he put the crayon. Similar approach, but this time I'm just going to slice the end off. That's definitely too big, so what I'm going to do now is just grind it up a little. And again, that's now ready to sprinkle. So, are we finished yet? I'm just looking at it. I've got a bit of a patch there, I think that's where I put the glue on. Let's just sprinkle a bit more over there just to protect it a little. So we're nearly there. One more thing we can do, so I'll set that up and we'll come back. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do is we're actually going to apply a bit of static grass just to get some nice effects and to hide some of the last bits that we've still got an issue with. Some there. Now the static grass is brilliant for hiding where you've got a join line on the tip. I'm not going to put too much on, I'm just going for clumps of it or anything else. I'm just literally going to pile the glue on in the areas I want it to go. Make sure we get around the rocks because some of the glue is still visible. That wasn't perhaps the best of ways of doing it, but it, you live and learn. If you don't try stuff, you don't learn things. A little bit in some of the rocks as well, just a couple of little clumps where we've got bits I'd like to hide. Look for places where it would look natural basically when you're doing this. Pick your areas. A 
up there, there's a few little clumps of grass just to uh, complete the effect. Put down the base of the rocks, I like. I think that should do for now, so again, we'll just put that out of the way while we do this. using a mix of different ones in here. I found sometimes that rather than actually layering it, when you just want a quick simple effect, just putting a mix of different textures and colours in will give a very nice little effect. Now you could cover the whole thing in this. Um, I'm just doing this more for show than anything else. You end up covering everything and then going back and going, oh yeah, missed that bit. Still got some show in there, so I could possibly do a bit more with that. Always remember, make sure you discharge it. So let's just top that back up. Stop it. Well, what's in there is clumping. And we are just about there, some nice rough moorland terrain for gaming. Um, I'll show you how the rock face came out. Quite like the rock face, it's not perfect, but I do quite like that. I think it's got some it's got a nice effect on it. Um, so the only thing I've got left to do now is to seal this, which I, I'm not going to worry too much about doing on camera because I think you've seen everything that you need to see. Hopefully that's been useful for you. Uh, if you do build some of this, let me know and we'll see um, what you've got. But you, put, you can feel free to load, load some comments um, and your own pictures. See you soon for another build.